Divine Truth Interviews Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. Mary interviews Jesus on the subject of Jesus and Mary's dealings, recorded on the 22nd of September 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is Session 2, Part 1. Hi everyone, I'm here again with Jesus. <laughs> And we're going to be talking today uh, about our personal dealings. So this is an FAQ session, a second one of Jesus and Mary's dealings yeah. with others. So in our first session, we talked a lot about how we deal with other people. And in this session, we're going to talk a bit more about how we choose to use our time yeah. and how we decide who... Well, in the first session, we didn't really give much detail. Not. It was about individual situations and so forth. But, but this time we want to give a general overview of why we, why we do what we do and how we do it and, what, and why do we respond to some people and not to other people and exactly. all of those kind of things. And, and also give people an idea about what our priorities are and what, what kind of things that we... we uh, how we prioritise our time. Because obviously it's very important for us to prioritise our yeah. time. And we'll talk about even why that's the case yeah, as it? to why it's so important to prioritise our time. Yeah, it's really a reflection of how we manage our whole life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you can't do everything. Like, and the, the more bigger picture things you do, the less little things you can do. Yeah. And that's so we, we've had to arrange our time in such a way that we accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. And, and so we, it, we do find it difficult to spend individual time with people at times. And we want to explain what's going on and why that's the case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because we do have to make choices about who we spend time with and what activities we choose to do and what questions we choose to respond to. Yeah. And a part of developing ourselves in love is becoming more self-reflective about how we make those choices, isn't it? Yes. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about in this, this session talks about some of the broader principles as well, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and for most people, I feel there is like a, they have a personal interaction with us, uh, not understanding a lot of the times what other things we've got going on in our lives. Yeah. And so they feel most people are fairly self, uh, you can probably even call it self-absorbed <laughs> in the sense self -focused that- Self-focused Or self-focused, yeah. their whole life revolves around them sort of thing. Yeah. And so, and so when they interact with us, that, um, while we give them our time at the time, they then think that that should be able to be demanded a lot of the time. And that's not the case because we, we have so much going on in our lives. And, and to be frank, I feel the majority of people who are accomplishing a lot of things in their lives have a lot going on in their lives. And so they have to learn how to prioritise their time. And what we would like to do is talk to people about how we prioritise our time, which is very, very different than how a person who has a big business would prioritise their time or Absolutely. someone who's an executive in a company would prioritise their time or even the average person who lives at home, goes to work and has family and friends and whatever would prioritise their time. So yeah. if we can explain those kind of things, that would be fantastic and that's what we're going to do in these sessions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's get going. <coughs> All right. So we're going to talk a little bit now about the question, how do we prioritise the use of our time? Mm. So that's you and I, how we decide how we're going to spend our time every day, every week. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. And maybe the first thing we need to do is start with this concept that um, obviously when somebody emails an email in, which is the way most people communicate with us, because most people come from around the world, so they're emailing in communications to us they don't realise how much of our time emails take to even respond to. Yeah. So for example, the average, if we think about the average question that a person has, if, if it's a sincere question and, it, and it's about their emotions or their state or what's going on for them personally, or even just a sincere question about, you know, how the universe operates and all these other questions, there's obviously a lot of facets in the answer of every question. The problem with email is that we've now got to type many, many hours of typing in order to answer their question thoroughly. And, yeah. and honestly, if, if you think about it, if we, if we only have 20 questions come in a week and I answer every question, so if I personally have 20 questions come in a week and I only answer one question um, at a time, and I'm answering three or four hours at a time because that's how long it takes to type up a yeah. fully fledged response, which might be five to 10 to 15 pages of text. 
and then you multiply that by 20 times there's 80 hours a week already yeah. and 80 hours a week and all you've done is respond to an individual person's questions one at a time and that's obviously not an effective use of our time. No, and that's part of why we have implemented lots of the things like we're doing right now to yes. try and give people access to a lot of inf a lot of people access to valuable information yes. in a time effective way. Yes. Something that I wanted to highlight when you were talking about just really giving a thorough answer to people in their questions is yeah. that that is really a quality of love to to not just answer people with a one-liner or to give them a brief thing and assume they're going to understand yes. everything that we say. And, and I know a lot of people, sometimes they feel really overwhelmed with the amount of words we use to respond to a single question. But both you and I feel that it's, it's quite unloving to assume that people are going to understand everything that we're trying to say um, without us spelling it out properly. Yes, and that's with us talking. Yes. So imagine if you're writing it, it introduces even more complexities because most people misunderstand what's written to them. Yeah. They can't feel the person, the emotional condition of the person who's sending them the information. Yeah. And so for a, lot, for a lot of them, they've got no idea that we actually have a kind feeling coming out of them or a loving feeling coming out of us and towards them when we're saying something that's quite confronting to them. But yes. And so when we type that up, it, the way people read it is totally based upon their filters. Yeah. And so when you're typing a response, not only do you've got to type around their <laughs> filters of what you can hear their feel from them their filters are, but also there's a higher likelihood with type text that the, that the whole thing will be completely misinterpreted yeah. and misinterpreted through their emotional filters, their childhood injuries and so forth. A lot of people just feel even just someone being direct and very clear is someone telling them off as being, you know, as an affront. Yes. And often, imagine if we had to pander around all of the being direct and say it in a roundabout way, it would take 17 times the amount of exactly. time. Exactly. And, and then if we had to feed all their addiction to feel yes. nice at, during the whole process <laughs> yeah. and make them feel like everything's nice and warm and fuzzy and all those kind of things, you know, then it's, then it's 30 pages, uh, you know what I mean, of yeah. text. And, and, and obviously, when it comes to writing that amount of text, we would rather write a book or, yeah. or write, you know, something that's benefiting thousands of people, not just one person. Yeah. And so it's highly unlikely for the majority of people that they'll ever receive an email response from us. Yeah. And oftentimes we have a priority list of who we're going to send emails yeah. to. Um, and as you know, I've got three or four hundred emails sitting in my account at any one time that I've never responded to because because uh, I just don't get the time to respond to them. Yeah, and we'll talk in another section about just exactly how we prioritise the specific issue of emails, hey? For sure. But something we wanted to highlight before we talk about just to how we prioritise all of our time is just to point out to people that we do only have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just like them. So yeah. there's no special dimension we can enter that will give us more time to, to be able to give yes. more attention to. Particularly in the physical. Yes, that, that's Obviously, right. Obviously, there's a lot of things we do in spiritual realms as well. And, and yes. you know, we'll go through some of these things. But um, in the physical realm, we have the same amount of time that everybody else has. Yeah. And, uh, and therefore, we've got to make sure we use that time wisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, a lot of, that brings the question of how we use our time. Yeah, let's get down to that. Yeah. So let's talk about what our number one priority in life is, the, yeah. and which is the thing that we, we use this hierarchy of priorities mm -hmm. to decide how we're going to use our time. Yes, and perhaps that, we need to state that first, is that we have a priority system in, built in both of us yeah. that is very... Uh, very, it's, it's quite strict in the sense that we, we feel certain things have far higher priority to us than other things. And as a result of that, we always focus on those. If we've given the opportunity to focus yeah. on two different things, whatever is in our higher in our priority list is usually the thing we will do. And just to point out before we begin, we do it for a reason because we understand that if we focus on our number one priority, it has a flow on effect of benefiting all of the lower priorities as of well. Of course, always, yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. So our number one priority is our relationship with God. Yes. So each and of us. Both of us do that, don't we? Yeah. We spend a lot of time by ourselves. Um, 
making sure that we're working through our relationship issues with God, giving ourselves time to pray. And we've done that all of our life because the, the reason why, obviously, is that the more we can develop our relationship with God, the more truth we can share with other people. Yeah. If we, have a, if we um, do not develop our relationship with God or we don't focus our time and priority on, that, on the development of that relationship, then obviously what it means is that, that we ha do not then have the ability to share what we have learned with other people. Yeah, and that's what we're passionate about. We're passionate about yeah. having this personal relationship with God and and the ability to share the benefits of that yeah. with other people. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not only for that reason. Our relationship with God is our first priority for our own selves as well. We, yeah. we realise that our own happiness is very dependent upon our developing relationship with God. And as a result of that, we focus very, very intensely, firstly, on the relationship with God, because, because we know that even ourselves being drawn together is dependent upon our relationship with God. Yes. And we've learnt that over many thousands of years. So, so that's why it's a big priority for us and that's where we spend the majority of our time. So in the course of an average week, you know, we would spend a good, a good third to a half of the entire week just on our relationship with God. Yes, yeah. And of course that comes into all of the other things that we're going to talk about low on the list as yes. well but but just the focus on that the personal fulfillment of having a relationship with god yes and um that's our number one thing yes yeah. and if you examine in terms of time uh, a good four days out of seven on the average we focus on our relationship with god yes mm -hmm. yeah so our second priority which ties closely with the first one is so. a focus on our personal progression Yes, so and by personal, we're talking about both of us together, not both of us apart. Yes, 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 yes. So we're focused on each of us progressing in love, spiritually towards God. Yes. So we, we focus a lot of our time and attention and aspiration on um, receiving truth, Yes. Uh, accepting God's truth into our soul yeah. um, and working on issues that surround love and the receipt of love, the giving of love and... But, but more with each other and, and with and ourselves. With, yes, like, so, towards ourselves. So, so this is where... And, and this is very much incorporated in the first section in a lot of ways. Like, exactly. So the time that we spend in the first section, we usually always spend, spend that, amount, that same time in a mixture of those two things generally, yeah. our relationship with God and our learning about ourselves, learning about the human soul, learning about how we can get closer together, yeah. learning about each other and all of those kind of things. Yeah, so why don't I mention the third one here because it's, it's we're in the same area, yeah. which is yeah. our personal relationship progression. With each other. With each other. So, yeah. so firstly, we're talking about relating with God. Yes. Then we're talking about developing ourselves in truth and love. And, and really, we are one soul anyway. And Correct. so it's about reestablishing that connection. And relationship. And relationship consciously and wonderfully and all yeah. of those things. Yeah. yeah. So, so you could basically say that, that both of us are focused on our relationship with God and then both of us are focused on our, our relationship. When we use the term our, yeah. we're not talking about Mary or, a or Jesus' relationship. <laughs> we're talking about our combined soul's relationship. Yeah. So, so because our soul is one soul, we're talking about one soul's relationship with God and one soul's learning of itself. Yes. And so we see even the joining of the two halves of the soul as the one soul learning about itself yeah. rather than two separate souls learning how to join with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and I suppose we've spoken about the soulmate relationship in other videos and, and other areas, um, te written things as well. But, but basically the understanding that fear and error and lack of truth are the things that are keeping us apart mm -hmm. um, and keeping us away from understanding this relationship as one soul and, yes. and enjoying that experience. Yes. Yeah. So we spend a lot of our time dealing with any addictions we will have, dealing with any areas where we haven't forgiven or repented for the things we've done, yeah. where we also look through issues of regarding, um, you know, what is our facade self and what is our real self, all the things that we taught in the assistance group as a general introduction yeah. are the things we do on a daily basis every single day of the week pretty much 
but on certain days of the week we spend even more time at it than others and there's at least three or four days a week where we're focusing our time on that on, on those the relationship with God and the relationship with each other yeah, yeah yeah and you could say that really that's our focus all the time but four days a week we pretty much say this is what we're about for yeah. these four days we yeah. our whole attention is going towards these three priorities yes yeah yes. yeah okay so that now gives us very little time left <laughs> <laughs> for the other things. Well, I would say it makes us far more effective in the other three days. In, <coughs> Certainly. Towards meeting these other priorities that we're going to talk about Certainly. now. I, I feel that it means the quality of what we do in those three days is... If I think about if I spent seven days on the remaining priorities that we're about to talk about and I neglected the first three, well, forget about it. Well, we wouldn't even have progressed at all over 2,000 years. We'd, so we wouldn't have anything that. to say. We'd have a studio with all <laughs> well, these lights. And we probably well, wouldn't, we have, a wouldn't have a studio. We'd probably have five kids and, and, and a whole heap of other pursuits and <laughs> yeah. a mortgage and, yeah. and three cars and yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of focusing our attention on, on God and ourselves in terms of progressing first. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so let's talk about priority number four. It's a bit of a nightmare to think about that. Isn't it? What's that, priority number four? Or oh, the no, sorry, about the, what our life would be like if we didn't have those priorities. Yeah, I can't imagine it. Um, yeah. You know, I've done it ever since I was a child in the first century, so I, I can't imagine what... I, I find it hard to even watch other people's lives at times mm. because I find it hard to imagine what they get out of their life when they're not focused on their relationship with God first. Yeah. So for me, it's quite like, while I understand what the reasons why they do all of that is, I don't really understand their life, given the fact now that I understand how important this development of your relationship with God is. Um, basically, that's the key thing for me. And so, mm. and, I, and I can't imagine living life any differently. Yeah, I suppose I have experience with that. I have 30 years in, in this, current incarnation uh, as well as experience in the first century where it was in my focus and mm. I the best way I can think to describe it is always coming up against a limitation that I, you know mm. even in my desires and a lot of fear governed my life there was a lot of unhappiness there was a lot of dissatisfaction internally with myself mm. and every way I wanted to turn or to do something I'd always run into like this sense of a limitation or that I couldn't go further or that and mm. it was it was very unhappy mm. so yeah and I love the whole thing with progress we've got everything changes all the time yeah. it's you're learning new things everything's life's changing all the time oh, I love change yeah whereas I see a lot of people are very stuck and don't like change at all and and I feel that's one of the reasons why is because they don't yet feel the advantage of having a relationship with God because if they did they would never want that relationship to be stagnant and they'd always want it to continue growing yeah. and they'd have a lot of focus on that relationship first. Yes yeah. and I think though when you're starting out like I used to say I loved change but really what I loved was just a change of environment or a change of track because it helped me <laughs> meet some more addictions or distract myself from yeah. how limited I felt. No I'm talking more about personal change, emotional change, state state of being, your own personal state of being. And that's what I yeah I mm. realized that that then around my 30th year I found you again and divine truths became a part of my life again and initially I found the the looking at myself quite confronting and the changes quite I was quite resistive to true changes but getting through yeah, that initial yeah. point so I, I don't even feel I, you were quite resistive I feel do you not no because I see I I know you say that all the yeah. time but but the feeling I get is that you like you couldn't help yourself. No, that's true. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. like the average person... I pulled my, my huge desire just pulled me through a lot of yeah. stuff. You know, the, the average person would have come up with the confrontations you had and gone, no, I'm out of here, right, within five <laughs> minutes. And, and you go, you want to go out, yeah, but, but you, you, want, you, know, you want to get away. But, but the, the desire for the relationship with God and desire yeah. for truth pulls you back in. And, and this is something that I notice a lot of people don't have, this the pull back into having the relationship with God driving everything they finish up doing. Yeah. And I feel, no, you know, that's very true. I feel one of the things that we've learned over many hundreds of years, you know, thousands mm. of years is, is to actually place 
the relationship with God first because everything else will be added to you if you have that relationship. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I said those words in the first century, that everything else would be added to you if you focus first on God's love. And uh, well, and it's been translated in the Bible as God's kingdom, yeah. which I suppose is God's love anyway. Yeah. But, um, you know, what I see is that people need to do that if they ever really going to enjoy the fruitage of continuous growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And it's probably the thing that I was searching for for those 30 years without yeah. understanding. So as soon as it like clicked as as it into place, you. I was like, I And can't. sure, there was all these addictions and other things <laughs> getting, being triggered, but, but at the end of the day... So like, I couldn't let it go. Couldn't let it go. No, that's very true. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. All right, priority number four. Yep. Which is about planning the future of divine truth. Universally. Yes. So, yeah, so we're now not talking just on earth. We're talking one of our tasks, I suppose, or jobs that in the end God finished up designing to us because of our desire for God was that we would be responsible for universal issues regarding the earth, the spirit world, the first six spheres of the spirit world, and helping people in the celestial spheres get to the condition of, a, um, of unification with each other, the yeah. soul union condition. And, uh, you know, we've spent, we spend a lot of our time, all of our sleep time, a lot of our sleep time yes. is spent in that, in that uh, process pursuit, and, and yes. pursuit. And also most of our awake time is spent in that as well. So we're not just interested in helping people on earth, but rather we're interested in helping people everywhere, which includes by far the majority of people who lives in the spirit world in comparison to the, mm -hmm. the, the 7 billion that are on earth. Yeah. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to help those people too. Um, yeah, and, and specifically planning how it is um, divine truth, or let's call it God's truth, mm. can come to be known by those people who aren't already who don't already in know. In connection with God. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that involves uh, organising millions of celestial spirits um, in different tasks that they want to be involved mm. in, as well as, um, you know, getting things started to get organised here on Earth. So, <laughs> and so, uh, I was yeah. just grinning because I was thinking about organising a bunch of celestial spirits is, is like... It's such a well. That's a breeze. Pleasant. You know? <laughs> it's like hardly what you wouldn't call it organising here. On yeah, Earth. no, it's a, it's a fun job, but but it does require organisation and planning. Still, yeah. you know, we have a whole heap of things that are organised in the spirit world that that are under our final control and that allow us to help people in the spirit world. And so, you know, obviously, we have to maintain those things and look after those things. So that because that's a high priority in our lives. Yeah. And also we know that if we help people in the spirit world, we'll also, because of the amount of spirit influence here on earth, yeah. we'll eventually help people here on earth as well. Yeah. 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 So priority four is about the overall global planning of that process. Yeah. You wouldn't call it global planning. You'd probably call it universal. Oh, yes. Universal sorry. Planning. Global, universal. Yeah. 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 Okay. And our fifth is about the progression of divine truth or the progression of the knowledge and the gaining of God's truth. Yes, so obviously everything we personally learn uh, through our own progress from focusing on our priorities number one and two yep. <laughs> um, and three, and three, and three <laughs> um, has to be somehow transferred to people who want to know that information. And so that requires the transference of information from ourselves to other people, yeah. whether they be other people who are spirits or other people here on earth. And if we talk about it just in earth terms at the moment, um, that's things like how we're going to distribute all of the material that we've already created, yes. written things, seminars, yeah. how the website's going to run, those, no. I'm skipping ahead a little. Yeah, because that's yeah. way down. That's way down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's, it's more about... Um, yeah, you, it's more about the, the distribution of information universally. So not yes. just here on earth, but yes. universally. So, yes. so what, we've found, what we've found in our life is that if we distribute information to other celestial spirits who want to know the information, they, now we have millions and millions of people 
who are able to distribute the same information as far as they understand it to other people who are uh, not in that condition. And so what that does is, it, you, I suppose the, you could call it in a business sense, uh, the leverage of other people's time. But <laughs> yeah. that's not how it feels to us. We're not leveraging other people's time. We're, we're transferring information that we've learnt to other people so that they can transfer the same information to many, many millions of other people. So what we find is we transfer our information generally in the spirit world to uh, groups of up to 100 to 200 people generally and are organised to then transfer that information to groups of thousands of people at a time yeah. and so forth and so forth until e every person in the spirit world is covered in, or, or looked after in some way. Yeah. And, and it's the same kind of process we would like to do here on Earth. Yeah. Um, we would like to have a group of people around us who understand uh, divine truth and who understand it emotionally, understand it at the soul level, who we can then help, to, who, who then can help to transfer that information to other people and so forth. And so eventually uh, the divine truth will become known by every person on earth, whether they want to choose to follow it or not, it's immaterial, yes. it, it will be known by them, which is really all we want to yeah. achieve. The, our biggest desire, isn't it, is just to give every single person the opportunity yes. to know no. this wonderful truth. Yeah. And they can accept it or deny it. We're not invested. Correct. Just that they have that opportunity in front of them yes. at some but, point. But one thing that will help them greatly is our own progression. Yes. And if our own progression on earth can be, can be shown or demonstrated practically, then, of course, that is going to make it very, very easy for other people to go, well, that's the kind of life I would like to, or that's the yeah. kind of things that I would like to be able to do too. And yeah. that will generate their desire and faith to actually develop their relationship with God and relationship with their other half, just like we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, priority number four is universal planning yes. of the future of divine truth. Yes. Uh, five is progression of this divine truth or yes. God's truth so in there are two, the spirit world. I suppose you could say one is the planning phase yes. and the other one is the doing phase. And uh, well, and let me move on to six, which is the teaching phase, yes. which you started to speak about. Which is about. a part of the doing phase. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So how do we go about sharing information that is soul-based information and, and it requires emotional openness to learn? How can we go about sharing information in an emotional way yeah. with people and help them cre and create an openness universally. It's yes. not just, fo again, focused on Earth. It's all the way through the spirit realm and on Earth. How do we help people get to this phase where they're no longer intellectually dominant and, and their soul now is desiring a, a connection with God? Yeah. And how can we help them achieve that state so that they too can go through the same transformational experience? Yes. And one of the particularly beautiful things about um, life on the earth plane and one of the, a big reason that we decided to come back here is that the earth is so readily accessed and viewed by people in all of the spirit realms yeah. and so us having this emotional engagement with God's truth again and anyone around us who does that who moves from intellectual dominance into this soul-based living that does an enormous amount to help the universal progression of understanding of God's truth. Very much so. And, yeah. um, and so, so, for example, if the average person connects emotionally on earth, there's spirits around them who are, who are either, who are what you'd classify as natural love spirits who have yet to learn emotional connection. Yep. They're learning from their experience. And then you've also got spirits around them who are in the hills who, who see them become brighter and their condition change. And so they're learning from those things. And then you've got, of course, spirits who oppose that even, but even their opposition of it is felt. Yes. And so, you know, there's a lot of people who learn from the one person going through an emotional experience. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. system. Okay, so that's we've got our first six priorities there. Yep, haven't even hardly touched <laughs> the earth at this point. <laughs> there's no emails yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, no. <laughs> All right. Although they might be involved in some teaching. Yeah, aspects. look, and I have to say, sometimes it is I am engaging um, it, with aspects of my personality or desire or even my progression when I write an email to mm. someone. So some people out there are going to be watching and going, hang on, Mary, you wrote me an email, yeah. and how did that fit in? And that's because either I felt very drawn in a, in a loving desire towards that person, and I felt it was a part of just expressing 
my nature, which I haven't done very much. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've written an email. Or, or it could have been that, uh, like in many cases, it's because of our personal learning, we have to engage that particular yes, person it's an to work through a specific emotion that we haven't addressed that the attraction with that particular person has identified. Exactly. Which is all about priority number two. Yes. yes. <laughs> or three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So our seventh priority, yep. um, which is very near to my heart, is helping people who are oppressed and suffering. Yes. And that's people in the spirit world and people on earth. And both of us have a strong feeling for people anywhere who are feeling oppressed or suffering mm. because of unloving treatment from other people, mm -hmm. other spirits. And um, that's a really high priority for us to, well, seven, but obviously yes. um, a part of what we do in the first six is, is towards easing that suffering. But our specific it's attention on those issues um, comes high in our priority list. Yes, yeah. and that, that includes things like, you know, when we notice a person being abused by another, um, obviously we'll try to help the person who yeah. is the, not the abuse er, uh. uh, <laughs> but rather the abuse e yeah. to actually work through their issues about why they've attracted the abuse, how that, you know, what, what soul condition has caused that to occur, how they can work their way through the issue. It's a lot easier, we've also found, to help a person who's being abused yes. than, it is, than it is to help a person who's actually the abuser. Yeah. The abuser generally has a lot more darker emotions to work their way through. And as a result, their desire, they have usually less desire to love than yeah. the person who's being abused. Yeah. And as a result of that, it, it, usually we spend more time with people who have been harmed than the people who do the harming. Yeah, it's kind of a sad fact, isn't it, that often the person who's doing the harming doesn't even take pause until the person that they're harming makes a shift of some kind. Correct. Because um, there's an addictive relationship between the yeah. two where the person who's doing the harming likes the feeling they get from the person they're harming. Yeah. And, and once you remove the person who's being harmed emotionally from that situation, and I'm not saying you physically remove them, but emotionally the person the makes change changes. in their emotional reaction Then to the it, person yeah. who's doing the harming doesn't get the same satisfaction yeah. from harming that person anymore. Yeah. And so then there's a higher likelihood of the person who's doing the harming will actually start to reflect upon their own behaviour. Yeah. And if people reflect about how we've dealt with different issues between even in families and, and partner relationships, yeah. Yeah. we've focused very much on the person who's getting harmed yeah. saying no anymore to yeah. the harm yes and um, and once the person the person does that then the person who's been doing the harming yeah. now no longer gets satisfaction from the harm they created yeah. and so now usually they enter a state where they go well yeah there's something wrong with me here too so yeah. then they go through their process and so that's why we generally do it in that order yeah. yeah. And of course, there are people who are suffering because they have done harm to others, because that's a natural result through the law of compensation. Of course. And we do have compassion for those people, most certainly. Yes. But we, we feel less drawn to them or they don't really fall into this priority if they still want to retain those choices to harm other people. Correct. As soon as a person says, look, I'm suffering, I want to change the choices that I've made or deal with why I've done this harm, mm -hmm. then we are full of compassion and really want to help them. Yeah. But if someone's suffering and basically they're just saying, yeah, but there's no problem with me, it's everyone else's fault that I'm suffering, yeah. then it's We're very We're not very attracted. We're yeah. not attracted, no. yeah. Sure, we want to offer them truth. Yeah, but even then they, they're not in the uh, state where they hear it. Exactly. And in fact, usually all they do is get angry and abusive. Um, and that's why in those cases point. we might share a truth more generally, globally, that's what I mean mm. about offering the truth in a more general sense about these are the facts about this and it's on a video, but we wouldn't go and search that person out or no. even necessarily respond to them. Not if, generally. If they're... But they're not ready to hear truth. Exactly. And a person needs to desire truth before they'll hear it. Yeah. And, and that's the case whether you're right sitting with them or whether they're the opposite side of the world. If they desire truth sincerely, they will eventually hear it and see it. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's one of the beautiful things about God's laws, isn't it? Of course, it? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Priority number eight. Yep, I can't remember priority number eight. <laughs> it did come to you pretty easy if you thought about it, but yeah, I, I, won't, I won't make you once, do that. Once you say it, I'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> That's about helping sincere groups yes. to progress. And this is about God's groups of people rather than love. individuals. Yeah. You know, obviously, um, you know, we want to help individuals, but obviously if there's a thousand people with exactly the same problem, it is much more time effective for us to help a yeah. thousand people with that problem yeah. than it is to go and talk to each one of those thousand people individually. Yeah. So, so obviously, we always will have a group priority over an individual priority. And if you think about even the assistance groups that we just did in 2014, um, there we had a group of people come together. If people show themselves to be not sincere, we ask them to leave mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that would make room for the learning and growth of the sincere people involved. Correct. And then we were able to present a lot of truths and lessons to this group of sincere people and each of them had the opportunity to interact and ask questions. But if we'd done that one-on-one -on -one with each one, we'd still be going now <laughs> um, in late well, 2015, you know, yeah. um, and still not be finished. And yes. so it makes more logical sense to help spirits in groups or people in on yes. earth in groups. In the spirit world, it's a lot easier than here. So we often help much larger groups in the spirit world than here. On earth, groups of people generally don't want to listen to you until everybody, it's fashionable to listen to you. <laughs> and at the moment, it's not very fashionable to listen to us. <laughs> so as a result, there's not a lot of group, large groups of people who want to listen. But in the spirit world, it is quite fashionable to listen to, <laughs> to Mary and Jesus. <laughs> so we get to spend time with millions of people at a time, oftentimes, yeah. and, uh, and therefore get the ability to help large numbers of people through what we talk about and and what we we share with them yeah mm. yeah and i suppose the key um thing to highlight in this priority is that we're talking about sincere people mm. we're talking it's not just a group of people who've gotten together because they're sort of not quite convinced about divine truth but maybe they yeah. want to hear well normally you know we have helped those in the past particularly in early days so yes <laughs> Um, but but the reality is there's a lot of other spirit helpers that we have to do those kind of events in the spirit world nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And we generally um, are helping the people who are helping the other people in yeah. the spirit world generally. Yeah, yeah and I mm. should say as well that a person can be sincere and not have made up their mind about divine truth. Mm. Um, I just mean people who are tossing up between the footy game and maybe listening yeah to those without a sincere desire to have truth in their lives yeah. of course uh you know most of the people we associate with in the spirit world only have that they have that you know? yeah. Yeah. but most of the people we associate with here on earth don't have that yet no and so um we do find at times it's difficult here on earth still because there's very few people who really have a very strong desire to hear truth in their lives. If you compare how many people are actually even listening to us, and I'm saying hearing us, not really <laughs> listening, <laughs> um, there's only a few thousand that are listening to us. Yeah. If you actually talk about the ones that are, that are actually letting it sink into their heart, there's yeah. probably less than 100 or so at this stage. Yeah who are letting it really sink into their heart you know and the, yearning for and that then truth. there's a yeah. there's a range of people in between who are selective you know yeah. they'll listen to that thing but not that thing and yeah you know yeah. and obviously the people who are not selective and who want god's truth right across the board even when it's challenging are the people on earth who we are you know the most interested in helping yeah, yeah. that's a, a deep pleasure isn't it to spend mm. time with those sort of people who for a lot of reasons. One primary reason is because it meets the other higher priorities. And if we can help an individual who has a sincere desire in their heart to grow towards God, and we can help them grow, make growth, then that person has the capacity to help hundreds of other people. Yeah. And so this then allows for the growth of divine truth on earth. If a person just comes along and listens, comes along and listens, comes along, but doesn't actually learn anything or do anything or make any personal changes, then that person really they're drawing a lot of time from us, but but without any larger results. Yeah. And while they may they may eventually get there, yeah. We need at this stage because it's early days yet here on Earth. We need to get a group of people together who actually are very sincere, have strong desire for their relationship with God, strong desire to know truth, a strong desire to live in harmony with God's laws and live morally and ethically. And those kind of people, um, 
once we find them, we do spend a lot of time with them, not only just for them, but also with the knowledge that those kind of people have a large amount of uh, potential of helping other people in the future. Yeah, it's not about helping us, it's about their, their capacity to assist others. Yes. And if we can assist them with the growth that we've made thus far in yes. those three first three priorities, assist them to make the progress in their relationship with God, with themselves, with their soul as a complete unit, yeah. then then it just has a flow on effect for other souls. Exactly. Um, it's not really helping uh, us except in our desire, which yeah, is well, to... Well, if, if we were selfish, we'd probably spend all of our time on the first three priorities <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and no time on any other priority. <laughs> so, but it's a bit hard. It doesn't really meet But, but you, can't, you can't be at one with God and be selfish. No. Uh, and you can't... And, and you do have a lot of compassion and, and feeling for other people. And so this is why we prioritise our life in the way we have. Yeah. And that's also why we spend a lot of time with people assisting certain people. Yeah. But, but we are more focused on people who are less resistive. Yep. than on people who are more resistive, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And part of that is just respecting the their will, you know. Correct. If a person's resistive, their will is not engaged. And so Well their will is on... actually engaged negatively. Exactly. They, they, they're engaging their will to resist. <laughs> so sometimes I feel like it's almost like a scientific equation. You can't if you can't help truth to enter if there's a big gate on it, no. so why would you keep trying? It's against the laws of science almost. Well, it's know. also it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting for, for the person, the person who's, who's re to... receiving as well as the person who's giving. Yeah, that's right. And the person who's receiving doesn't want to hear the information. So what's the point in telling them? Like the only time we would enter into a you know some kind of a thing where we do talk to somebody when they don't really want to hear it is because they've forced us into the, forced themselves into our lives in some way. Yeah, or yeah. I feel about the issue of oppressed and suffering people. You know, if I'm in a situation Even then I don't generally don't, engage them. Yeah. Um, I know you do still, but um, I generally don't it's a bit of my because I just feel they're still not ready. They're still not they, they still, a lot of people who are suffering, you can say people who are suffering fall into a couple of different categories. There's a group of people who are suffering, who are suffering because of their own choices. Yeah. And then there's the group of people who are suffering because of the choices of others. Yeah. Now, I have a much higher desire to help the people who are suffering from the choices of others rather than their own choices, because their own choices are actively engaged by their own will. I suppose that's, uh, and perhaps, we can talk about that, but I suppose that's when I feel more um, desire to speak up. If I'm witness to a situation where someone is oppressing, attacking or abusing another, um, and it's quite clear the issue of love and truth there, mm -hmm. often I want to speak up mm -hmm. um, for the truth in the situation mm -hmm. um, because I feel in a way that... <laughs> that's a part of living morally. Do you disagree or are you talking about something different there? Yeah, like I do agree, but yeah. I think we're getting a bit off track yeah, here. Sorry. But, yeah. uh, but the reality is we would like to obviously help all people, yes. but, it's, but it's less possible to help people who are actively resisting any help that they're being given. Yes. It's like a person who's incapacitated mm. arguing with you while you're trying to help them. Yeah. yeah. My feeling is don't help them. Yeah. <laughs> because, it, because at the end of the day, they, they need to feel the full consequence of their incapacitation rather than, rather than have somebody helping them and they just complain at that person all the time. It's exhausting yeah. for the person who's helping. Yeah. And, and I would like to help people. Obviously, people... Like I said, there are two groups of people. There's a group of people who are suffering because of the choices of others. Mm. And then, you know, then there's a group of people who are suffering because of their own choices. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in the Western world are suffering because of their own choices. Mm. And so, you know, when it comes to helping suffering people, um, obviously we're interested in the people who realise that they're suffering because of their own choices and they want to change that. Yeah. You know, so it requires people to go through certain awarenesses before you can help them. Yeah. And the reality is we don't want to spend our time 
forcing awareness on people. No. They need to develop yes. their own awareness. Yes. And look, we don't need to go down this rabbit hole any further. No. I'm sorry for digressing <laughs> us a little. Okay. So priority eight is helping sincere groups to progress. And this and the focus here is groups. Groups. We, we will always put a higher priority on groups than individuals. Yes. For this reason. And we've touched on nine, which is helping sincere individuals, individuals. to progress. Yes. And and we will help sincere individuals to progress frequently, but Oftentimes at this stage, it's because we feel in the later time they will actually finish up helping other people to progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the more responsive a person is, the higher their priority is for us. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if a person looks at that list, they can see that there's a lot of things not on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, well, I just all. mentioned 10, oh, yeah. which is um, our yeah. personal interests related to why we're here. So yes. that yeah, falls course, way yeah. down the list of 10. Yeah, but, um, but, but that is important in terms of like, there's a lot of personal things that we want to learn and there's a lot of personal things we would like to do. Yeah. And, and these are not generally physical things that the average person does. You know, it's not like we're very interested in traveling or yeah. any of those kind of things. Uh, we're interested, we, we have a lot more sincere and deeper desires than that, um, that are more focused around personal, our personal growth. Yeah. And so, you know, we focus on those when we've got time from those well, other things, <laughs> <laughs> which are, as you know, yeah. is not, not so is that frequently. Yeah. You know, like I go outside and jump and do somersaults on my trampoline, but yeah. Yeah. it's not a... You know, it's not something I spend, you know, all Hours my time doing, learning yeah. to do. It's yeah. not like I'm jumping for the Olympics or something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you could jump for the Olympics. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the things that are not on our priority yeah, list. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. So basically, um, people who are in addiction, who are demanding, who are um, trying to monopolise our time, who want to, us to convince them of the value of, of truth. divine truth. Yeah. All of these kinds of people don't even fall on the priority list. No. So a person might send us an email with a whole heap of Bible verses saying they want a response on all of those kind of things. And and why would we respond? Like they're already, they're, they're not even desiring any yeah. information yeah. generally. And even if they are, they're so fully entrenched on the Bible being God's word that they can't hear anything we're saying. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, you know, unless there is a greater good in assisting that one person, mm -hmm. we don't have the time to assist them. Uh, they need to become far more open to truth before we can assist them. Yes. Yeah. And the sincere person in that category, you know, who comes from a Christian background, there's a wealth of information that we've already presented in FAQs that Correct. they can view, you know, and, and our beautiful volunteers who man the FAQ and office accounts yes. dir often direct those people to those yes. um, videos. But because uh, many of those people are completely insincere and attacking, mm. they just want to attack us some more. Yeah, so. and they're not going to get on our list to respond. No. You know, a person can no. attack us till they're blue in the face, but at the end of the day, they're not going to get a response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not like the average people who attack back because they're being attacked. That's you know, right. So, so at the end of the day, yep. we're not going to attack back, but we're also not going to respond. There's no need to respond. In fact, if anything, we might block, block their email address or whatever. Exactly. You know, yeah. So that we don't have to even put up with deleting their email. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So basically, we don't, nowhere in our priority system falls anyone who's attacking, abusive, who want to treat us badly. Even or treat people, others badly. Yeah. Yeah. If we observe them treating others exactly. badly and we've talked to them about it already and they still want to do it, there's no point in talking to them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's quite a number of people who think they're sincere who continue to treat others badly. And we have very little to do with them now because they still haven't learnt to stop treating others badly. Yeah. Um, and There's and little we can do. We've already said what we needed to say to them. And, exactly. Yeah. And as we mentioned in our introduction to this session, as we develop in love, we do get more selective and reflective about who we decide we're going to spend our time with because... Um, yeah. Even the, the laws of attraction are operating. And if, mm. if someone doesn't have a desire to take personal responsibility for themselves and their life, even someone who doesn't is not really interested in a relationship with God and just want a relationship with us, they don't really fall on our priority list. And no. that's not because we necessarily um, judge them or think ill of them. It's just because there's not... 
Well, there's a lot of reasons. That they can't understand us for a start. Yes. And, and we don't understand their priority. We, we understand why they choose it, but we don't understand why they want to choose it yes. in the sense of like, so they, they also have, because most people in that category have no soul progression, they're not emotional beings, so they don't get what we do most of the time, and they're yeah. totally confused most of the time, and usually argumentative. Yeah. And so, you know, there's no point in having a relationship with those people. Yeah. And um, yeah, so there's a whole heap of reasons why we wouldn't have a relationship with those people. But even there's a whole heap of reasons why we wouldn't even probably interact with those people by choice. Yeah. Um, we might do it in a seminar situation or something yeah. like that, yeah. but we certainly wouldn't do it. You know we wouldn't go out of a way to visit them at their home or something yeah. when yeah. they've already displaying how much resistance they have and and what can we do to talk about the weather we don't we're not into talking about the weather or many other physical things <laughs> as yeah. most people who spend a lot of time with us realize realize mm. and um yeah i feel we're quite passionate and motivated in this area of our priorities and mm. so it seems like poor time management to it suddenly is. introduce other uh, other pursuits, even things like just travel for the sake of sightseeing. And, yeah, or, or uh, go down the beach every day for the sake of surfing. Or yeah. Like, yeah. like I like surfing. You love surfing. But, yeah. but the reality is I don't, uh, you know, the last time I surfed, I, probably two years ago, yeah. you know what I mean? Like because it's not high on my priority yeah. list we like doing it to relax or yeah. like if we need relaxation if we need to have time away from people we will do it then but yeah. but we're not addicted to those pursuits so we're not addicted to pursuits that are selfish in order to get some kind of feeling so, yes. so, so we're not doing those things because we want something out yeah. of it yeah. we're doing them because we want some relaxation perhaps but that's all yeah. So yeah, there's no reason why we'd spend time, and even time with people who just want their addictions met. There's yeah. plenty of time, people around us who, who they only want to come and visit me because they feel nice when they do. Yeah. And when they go away, their life doesn't change, nothing happens to their life, they don't work through anything that we've talked about. And those kind of people honestly don't attract me very much. They, they, they are in fact like a, a, an occasional leech in a way. Where they I was just, just about to make the sucking noise. <laughs> they're sort of taking from, from us. <laughs> without any desire to change or change their life they and a lot of them don't even know why they want to visit us to be no, honest they just they want to have a nice feeling they haven't reflected about that and there are people who want things from from us like to feed we mentioned addictions globally but you know things like to feed someone's vanity or yeah. to feed their feeling that they are getting somewhere or to help them just feel better about themselves for for this period of time or or to, for us to cheer them up or to give them faith or to give them hope and all of those things. And, and mm. obviously, while we're open to um, doing that in a pure way, if mm. someone's doing that in an addictive kind of... And in, in um, a way, to, in a desire to avoid their own progress, exactly. then we won't help them. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, we, we want to help people have faith and hope and to feel good about themselves, but... But only if they're doing it to progress, not yeah. to avoid their progress. Exactly. There's a lot of people who want you to tell them that they can have faith in God, but they have none themselves and they have no, uh, they have no desire to get some. Yeah. They just want you to tell them that they should have some. Yeah. And we're not interested in that kind of interaction. We want to interact with people who truly desire faith in God in their heart and work their way through any issues of why they don't have faith. You know they sincerely desire that yeah. so yeah there's a lot of people that we we generally don't seek out as a result of these particular things yes mm -hmm. and i suppose the the last um group of people that we haven't really mentioned that don't fall on our priority list are members of the media who are just interested in furthering their career through their association with us yeah uh, like know. there's a lot of people in the media who have this belief that um, we must be desperate for attention because I'm saying I'm Jesus, you know. Yeah. And in particular, it's usually focused at me because yeah. of that. And and they don't realise that I'm not des. You know, they have no idea or understanding of me as a person. They don't realise that I'm not desperate for attention at all. Mm -hmm. And and so when they approach us to have some kind of media interaction, they're confused about my lack of interest. Mm. And my lack of interest is driven totally by the fact that I don't feel in many of them, any pure desire on their part to share truth with the world, to learn any personal truth themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time they have a they have a career to further, a job to do or whatever. 
And as a result of that, you know, there's very little desire on my part to engage them. Yeah. And and we, you know, we we're spending less and less time engaging people like that. If there was a media person who wanted to share what we teach, mm. I'd be totally into engaging them. Yeah. Because because to me, to us. Uh, our desire is not to talk, share about us, which is all, all most yeah. media want to hear about, yeah. but rather we want to share about the truth we teach. And, and if there was a media person who was interested in having a whole series of presentations or forums or, or, or even interactions with audiences about what we teach, mm. now I'd be interested in that. But I'm not interested in sitting there and getting attacked and I'm not interested in sitting there and being abused. And I'm not interested in sitting there talking about myself yeah. either. <laughs> and and <laughs> so. just the buzz questions about being Jesus and the witnessing the crucifixion and all those kind of things that are just posed to create drama and sensation. And Well, not only that, even if they were sincere, they are just memories of our life, um, which mean very little to us, yes. as to us ourselves, aside from some residual pain that we might have to, to express or deal with mm -hmm. because of the memories. But um, there's very little other reason for sharing it with anyone, aside from what the person might learn from the experience. Yeah. That's the only reason why we would share it. Yeah. 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 Mm. Awesome. So... So that brings us to the answer of the first question, does it? The, is that the end of our? <laughs> <I can't laughs> that's remember. the end of our priorities. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I'll that's just... that's certainly the end of our priorities. Yes. And uh, and what we wanted to state there is right. So so now that you understand our priorities, exactly. so for everybody out there, yeah. now you understand our priorities. Perhaps you already know why we have or have not answered your questions, or why we haven't dealt with you, or why we have dealt with others and not you, or why we deal with you and not others. Yeah. Perhaps a lot of those answers <laughs> are all present for you. <laughs> and yes. if not, we'll help you with the next series of yes. questions that are yeah, coming after this. <laughs> <laughs> you must receive a lot of questions from people in the spirit world and on earth. Mm. How do you prioritise the answering of these questions? <laughs> well, the truth is we do receive a lot of questions. Yeah. Obviously, we have spirits hanging around us all the time wanting to ask questions. And then on people with people on Earth, yes, we do receive a lot of questions. And we receive questions via email, phone calls, in seminars. Yes. Yeah. And, and if we just even look at just the emails, you yeah. know, there's quite often in the course of a week, there's quite often hundreds of them. Yeah. So, and, and some of the emails are not just questions, they are often statements and other things all incorporated, which yeah. of course, uh, and many people will have for some reason a desire to send us long-winded explanations from their, you know, from their life uh, before they ask a question as well, which yeah. we find quite tiresome yeah. at times. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously they're not just asking a question, they want us to engage personally in their particular situation yeah. and they don't necessarily believe we can feel them. Yes. So therefore they have, feel they have to explain everything. Yeah. But it is true we get asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, most of them, unfortunately, are selfish, mm. self-oriented, self-absorbed questions, basically about their personal life with no, as, no consideration for things outside of themselves. Um, so obviously that doesn't fit in any of the priorities <laughs> that we mentioned in question number one that we've just answered. Yeah. So the question was, how do we go about answering them? Well, well how we do answer, we decide? How do we decide? To prioritize? And the prioritization of our of, of answering questions is exactly the same as the prioritization of our life. Yeah. So if it fits into the priorities of our life, then we will probably answer the question. If it doesn't fit into the priorities of our life, yeah. then it will not. And we've gone through, we've just gone through in question number one yeah. of this session, all the priorities of our life. But let's go through them as they reflect to questions. All Perhaps. right. So, so, so if someone asks this question about God, yes, they're probably highly likely going to get an answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's almost a guarantee, one. This yeah. is depending on a time, of course. That yeah, we have. and that's not probably something. Okay, but we should put up the beginning of this because we're focusing on all those priorities we just talked about in question one. Um, it does depend on the amount of time we have available because sometimes people who we do feel are quite sincere, who have a really good question, do email us, but we just unfortunately do not have the time. 
or we've answered the question before in a different in a form. different form yeah or and they just haven't found that question yet yes. we, and we're trying to do something about that we're trying to make search engines and so forth so that yeah. you know people can find the answers to questions they have yeah. and there's all sorts of ways that we can accomplish those kind yeah. of things yeah. but yeah questions about god um, if we need to firstly probably say too though that if a person asks us a question via email, yeah. then it's highly unlikely they'll get a response anyway. Yeah. And the main reason why <laughs> that is the case is because it is hard for us to answer questions via email for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. We spend very little time in front of the computer except to do uh, universal things. Yeah. So when I say universal things, like I spend very little time in front of my computer in front of the email. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time programming. Yeah. I spend a lot of time setting up websites, programming servers, sorting out you know, how to maneuver clips from one place to another and all these other things that I've got to sort out. But I don't get very much time to actually sit down in front of the computer and actually answer emails one by one by one by one. Yeah. And Usually the only emails nowadays that I finish up answering are the emails where I'm working with another group of people or I'm working with a person on a project mm -hmm. and we need to have some back and forth to sort some issues out and that's why I'm emailing. Um, yeah. It's very rare for me to be involved in emailing via, and then answering questions via email. Yeah. And we should say that we've set up the Frequently Asked Questions email account and the Office email account mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a lot of things there to try and help just we have volunteers helping us to link people with information that's already been presented by us yes in fact we've made a recent rule that no volunteer should even answer a question yes because we feel quite strongly that if the material hasn't been presented we need to present it yep. so that everyone can benefit yep. and if the material has been presented all that needs to be done is refer them to the material yep. and uh, and so we're trying to even shorten the amount of time our volunteers spend Exactly. Uh, in, front, in front of computers too, because while they're in front of a computer, they're not producing or creating. Yeah. And so this is, we're focused on everybody who's involved with Divine Truth creating more truth. And I suppose we want to encourage and support the people who volunteer with us to be able to have the same priorities as us. Correct. So we don't want our volunteers sitting down in front of the computer answering questions seven days a week. No. We would like to see our volunteers at the most spending three days a week at the, most. at the most in front of a computer and the rest of the time spending their time with their relationship with God and their relationship with the soulmate and all the other really important issues. And um, so, so we also find emails a very ineffective way of communicating. Yeah. Most people who email us um, have very little idea how to communicate very well. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, um, most of the time they misinterpret our responses quite easily because yeah. of their emotional condition. Yeah. So we find it a very ineffective method of communication and particularly ineffective when it comes to communicating truth. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's often funny, isn't it? Because in the age of Google, you, where you can type in three words into a search engine and get like thousands upon thousands of you know hits of potential information to answer your question, often people write us an email. It takes them you know half a minute at the write. most to write. Yep. But if we were to engage with that lovingly to provide a full written response to that question, it could take someone or ourselves a hours. whole day. Even. Yes. A whole day yes. even just to give them all the aspects of what they've asked. Yeah. And yeah. that's why we try and create other material that can help answer questions and also empower people or give educate people in how they can discover the answers. Well, of course, the, the biggest way they can discover the answer is if they find and develop their relationship with God first. And that's not what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people want to come to us for answers all the time, but they don't want to develop their relationship with God first. Yeah. And we're saying to them, look, if you develop your relationship with God first, you will get the answer to every single question. Yeah. That's how I get my answers <laughs> to your questions, <laughs> by developing that relationship with God first. So if I get my answers to your questions, I'm certainly already getting my answers to my own questions. Yeah. And, and, and I suggest that every single person does that. Now, if the question is helping you develop your relationship with God, then certainly I will try to engage that yes. question. Probably not by email, though. Yes. Probably by a recorded session like yes. we're having now. Um, email is, like I said, a very ineffective method of communicating. And it's also a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. uh, even phone is usually one-to-one. -one. 
Yeah. Whereas, whereas if you put the answer up on a website or you put it up, uh, you know, in some public forum or something, now it's one to many. Yeah. It's, it's more effective. So, so our friend Nikki has recently started a forum, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, the only forum that we feel we'll ever share on because of his terms and conditions, which we feel match our own terms and conditions yeah. with, inter with, with interacting with people. Yeah. You know, we're high, more highly likely to spend some time answering things there mm -hmm. where lots of people can see yep. what's being said and done than answering something where somebody sends us an email privately because, because m most people never hear it and never benefit from the answer Yes, there. And, and often the person, you know, depending on how open they are, they might be open to the first five minutes of the conversation and then become overwhelmed and the next 20 minutes is sort of lost forever. Well, not um, lost forever. They might come back to it in two years' time and listen to it again and go, they oh, recorded now it. I, If they <laughs> if recorded, recorded it. Yeah. Often, you know, now when we're having interactions with people on the phone or in person, I often say to them, do you have a Are recorder? you recording this? <laughs> <laughs> because it's going to help you much more to be able to listen to this in three days' time and in five weeks' time. And yeah. Whereas it, just now there's going to be a saturation point where a bunch of emotions get triggered. triggered within you and from then on it's pretty much cactus. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> By the way, we should probably define that yes, sorry. <laughs> statement because that's a very Australian colloquialism, isn't it? Um, well, it's, it's pretty much not going to go very far. Beyond the prickles. And beyond, <laughs> it's big desert. Um, speaking from personal experience, there's, and people used to laugh at me because when I first met you, I'd just have a notebook in front of me sometimes where I'd start writing things down because even it reaches a point where there's emotions coming up mm. and unless I go and feel, and we have had many conversations, haven't we, where I say, look, I've got to come back and I go and have a cry and come mm. back and then we can speak more about what else is underneath mm. or what else, the furthering of that truthful lesson. Yeah, certainly. But sometimes even my auditory understanding of the words just goes out the window because it's like I'm still way back there on what you said three minutes ago and there's a process going on internally. And, mm. and that frequently happens, doesn't yeah. it? Where yeah. the process internally now dictates the person's ability to listen and really, from that point, it's pointless interacting with that person, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one level. Yeah. If you're in a group, you can just still keep talking with the group, which I often do. Yes. But if I'm just interacting with that person on a one-on-one -on -one level, I, uh, the thing I generally say to them now is, look, you're not hearing anything I'm saying now and, and it my, you know, it's pointless speaking it while you're not hearing it. Yeah. You need to go away and feel about what I've already said. And, yeah. And then we'll work on what needs to be said <laughs> yeah. as well, in addition to that. In addition, yeah. 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 So basically getting back to our question, how do we prioritise the answering of questions? It basically depends on how they fall in our priority list that mm -hmm. we talked about in the first question. In so let's series. say, let's look at the priority list quickly. Yeah. Questions about God, definitely want to answer them. Yep. Um, and, and in fact, we've got many questions we want to answer. Ironically, we find hardly any person asks any questions about God. About God. And yet that's our highest priority of questions <laughs> to answer and yeah. God's laws and those kinds of things. Nature God's and nature. God's nature, God's personality, yeah. all of those kind of questions. And then there's questions about, um, you know, the soul mate, the soul union condition, the soul, you know, the progress of each half of the soul. And the progression in love, how one can progress in love yes. and truth. So anything about what is love, what is not love, what is what is development of your will, what mm -hmm. is not, what is development of, you know, uh, of ethics and morality, what mm -hmm. is not, you know, those kind of questions attract us, certainly. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a higher likelihood we'll answer those questions. Um, so, so you can see that, you know, even questions about addictions and emotions and, and things like that, we will generally answer them because they do interfere with a person's relationship with God. And mm -hmm. if a person's truly sincere, we obviously want to answer those questions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then as we go on down the, the list, there's things about the universal sharing of God's truth. And that's why, and sharing in groups rather than for individuals. And yeah, but if we look at the universal sharing, when people yeah. ring a, a phone us or email us and they're talking about, you know, setting up a learning centre somewhere, then obviously we'll possibly engage them. Yeah. But if we feel that they have no understanding of what they're even talking about, yeah. then we probably won't. Yeah. Um, because we feel that that person's not yet sincere and doesn't yet fully understand what's involved with regard to yeah. 
even running a centre or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you know, obviously it just depends on the circumstance, yeah. and each circumstance is individual. Yeah. So we can't make a hard and fast hard and fast rules with all of these different issues. But you can see that if something doesn't fit into our personal our personal passions and desires or part of that priority system, then given the time we have, it's highly unlikely we'll get around to answering that kind of question. Yeah, mm. yeah, <coughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, look, that's really what we wanted to say on that question, mm -hmm. um, just that we follow our own, you know, priority system and really we have limited time available, especially for written interactions beyond yes. that. It's important that people see that one-on-one -on -one interactions are not a proper use of our time if we have a universal or global desire Focus. to share truth. Yeah. And when people, a lot of people we feel get quite angry with us about not responding to their one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. In fact, we get quite a few nasty emails mm -hmm. after a person sent us what they believe to be a sincere response, yeah. a question and we do not respond to them. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even respond to them just because we haven't got the time to respond yeah. to them given our other priorities. They then start abusing us and now we definitely won't respond to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't understand even, like, it's, it's interesting, people are very self-absorbed when it comes to the use of time. They send off very, like you said, very short emails, yeah. not understanding that the answer to that question might take hours and hours of written response, mm. or even like half an hour of verbal, verbal response, yeah. which we've got to set up a recording like this mm -hmm. for, and we've got to you know, have people involved, there's got to be a person switching the video, editing the video, getting it up on YouTube, there's all these different mm. things that are involved in all that, a lot of technology, and people have no real concept of what goes into answering their questions. No. Uh, let alone their attempt to engage us on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that does take a lot of time and energy of our own that often we're better off spending in other pursuits to help more people than just one person. Yeah, and recently we have decided <laughs> that one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, we only want to have them with people who, as we said in our priority list, who are quite sincere and, and want to receive truth. But that more, they more than also that, the ones who have a direct desire that we can feel for God and their relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. And, and, are, and are fully in the stage of confronting their addictions, not yeah. people who make out they are. Yeah. And if we can feel they're being fake and facade yeah. or facade is not even a word, <laughs> no, is it? But no. a fake, they're, pre they're presenting, presenting a fake facade, facade to us. Yeah. We're not interested in that. We can feel you. Don't yes. think you can get away with presenting a fake facade to us yeah. because we can feel you. Yeah. So we will tell you when you're being fake mm -hmm. and most of the time we'll be spot on. And usually when we are, the person responds with rage yeah. and that also indicates to us that, yes, that, that there's their facade now being triggered. And, and we're not interested in interactions like that. We want to focus on, does this person have a desire for God that's real? Yeah. Do, do they have a desire to love that's real? Yeah. Do they have a desire for truth that's real? Yeah. Are they humble? Do they really want to feel all of their emotions? Yeah. And there are people who don't feel their emotions who do really want to feel their emotions. Yes. And then there's some people who feel emotion, but they don't want to feel anything They're real. real emotions, yeah. <laughs> you know, so... so the reality is we, 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 our priority system applies to every interaction yeah. and, and, and we do not ignore it. No. And, and if other people want to ignore it, that's up to them. That's, yeah. They yeah. can ignore yeah. anything they want, yeah. but, but they haven't heard us if they think that they can just have a fake interaction with us or make out they're interested in God when they're not. Yeah. Because uh, we can feel them when we interact with them. So we don't, need, we don't even need to hear a lot of the words from them. Mm -hmm. We can feel their condition, feel what the issues are generally. And, and when they describe some of their life, then it becomes very accurate. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can even tell them what's going on in most cases. But we want to focus on the people who are sincere first because without those people, no one else on this planet is going to hear divine truth, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what I was going to say was even beyond that, beyond that's our criteria for personal interaction, we are now saying not only... Uh, those are the requirements, but we want to, they have to agree to be recorded yes. so that it can benefit 
more other than just people. them. Yes. Yeah. So even if we do have an interaction with an insincere person, yeah. at least it's being recorded and people may learn from it. Yeah. Whereas, whereas in the past, sometimes we've had lots of interactions with people not recorded, nobody's learnt from it, and even the person who we wasted the time spending it with didn't learn from it. Yeah. And, yeah. and we don't need to learn from it. No. We already know what we're talking about yeah. on those particular subjects. And so what all we needed to learn was to not engage those people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're doing that. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. Yeah. It, it, there are a lot of spirits and a lot of people on earth who are fully focused on just wasting time. Yeah. and wasting our time yeah. as much as anybody yeah. else's. Yeah. And yeah. we don't want to waste our time. We're here for a purpose and a reason, and we've got a pretty good idea what that purpose and reason is, and yeah. we don't want to waste our time with pursuits that don't match those purposes yeah. that we have. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So even people who do have sincere questions that we we are still going to answer them in a way that benefits a lot of people and they yes. have to be willing to have the record of our interaction yes. uh, recorded. And, and a lot public. aren't. Many there are some aren't. sincere people who are sincere, but yeah. they, they, when it comes to truth, they're still scared of it. Yeah. And so they send us a question, but they say, they pre preface it with, we don't want you sharing this with anybody. We don't want you sharing our you know, details mm -hmm. with anybody. And we go, well, this person doesn't understand truth. Yeah. This person doesn't understand that everything is openly transparent in the spirit world and to God. Yeah. And this person needs to learn that truth, yeah. that everything's openly transparent. And until they learn that, there's little point in engaging that person, even if they have a sincere question. Yeah. If we feel that sincere question will benefit hundreds or thousands of others, then certainly we will answer it in an interaction like this, yes. but the answer won't be directed at them specifically. Yeah. Um, and that's the way we need to handle all of that. As we say, our time mm -hmm. is very precious to us and how we use it has to be very considered. Yeah, mm. yeah. Great. G'day. <laughs>